We're two hitchhikers. We met while hiking Mount Baldy with mutual friends, wasted no time, got engaged on a frozen alpine lake, got hitched, and have been adventuring together since. We're embarking on a new adventure of living big in a tiny home. Let's see how this goes. Adventure awaits. <laughs> Well, all right, now that we have all of the plumbing in place and secured, as well as the gas lines, we can now finally, finally, finally put insulation under the floor. And this will hopefully just seal in all of the nice, warm, cozy air that we're creating with the Cubic Mini stove. So insulation time, here we go. Actually, here we go. <laughs> It was once again, time to suit up. The insulation was a fairly straightforward process because it can basically be molded and squished into, onto, and around objects with ease. Granted, Reuben only had about 18 inches of crawl space to fit into. The more challenging part was fitting the panels up and in to each nook and cranny. Although much less messy, this took a bit longer because of all of the cuts that had to be made. All right. At the end of the day, dark clouds started rolling in, so we made quick work of cleaning up and waited out the storm so Ruben could finish up the next morning. Oh. Last nail. We are officially insulated. Woohoo! Finalizing this last step in insulation is another major milestone for us. Did you know that a typical poorly insulated house can lose 15% of heat through doors and windows, 25% through the roof, as much as 35% through the walls, and 15% through the floor. We have insulated walls, a door, roof, double pane windows, and now an insulated floor. We have noticed a difference in our indoor temperature. For one, we can actually walk around barefoot without our feet freezing. Without the wood stove burning, we are noticing an average of 20 degrees warmer inside now. With the wood stove burning, we're layering down to t-shirts and shorts because we are actually on the warm side. We are assuming that once we do install the floor and that we have the interior built out more, our inside temperature might stabilize a bit more and we won't have to rely on so much heat output from the wood stove. We do have a mini split that can regulate heat and cooling, but that is a future project for once we actually get the solar system set up. Okay, so it is currently, according to the temperature gauge inside the car, it says it's 21 degrees and I'm checking the weather right now. And, oh, it says it's warmed up to 30. That's gone up quite a bit. Um, Yay, 30 degrees, it's warm, it's still below freezing. But, um, so this is where I am still working on videos. I am in the shipping container and the shipping containers are not insulated because we haven't worked on these at all. These were never meant to be lived in. This is just a place to house um, all of our things and including our food, which by the way, it is so cold here, this, is olive oil, it's frozen, and it probably has not thawed out in about two weeks at this point. Uh, 
I'm not relying on this olive oil right now. I've got other olive oil, but it just goes to show you how cold it is in here. And yes, this is where I work on the videos because we don't have dedicated electricity in the casita yet. We're just working on this very small amount of electricity to make sure that our gadgets are powered and we have some light and a little bit of fan for air circulation. So I come here to work on these videos in these sub-freezing temperatures so that we can still share these videos with you. Ruben is currently diagnosing a vehicle for somebody in the area and potentially he'll be working there uh, for most of the morning. But what I try to do is in between projects or in between chores like chopping firewood, for example, which we go through very quickly here, I try to come and work on these videos. And yes, it is sub-freezing temperatures, but there's no other way we can get this done. So it goes without saying that when you watch these videos, we really, really appreciate it because it is truly a labor of love. We're not getting monetized for any of these videos. And uh, this is just a way for us to share our journey with you. Initially, we started this channel just to share our adventures with our parents and then when we decided to start doing this build we extended it to our family and you know now we have friends and loved ones that follow along and other people that we don't know which uh, is very exciting to us so the fact that you are watching these videos really does mean a lot we know your life is very busy so we do appreciate it in, in addition to you watching these videos um, it really does mean a lot if you subscribe and even like if you like the video and even comment because all of those interactions, it really does help push the video out to more people who might be interested in this content. And uh, it's, you know, all feeding the algorithm essentially. So we really do encourage you to put your comments, your feedback, your critiques, in the comment section, um, I know a lot of people still message us directly, which is completely fine, but it really does help if you put it in the comments. And uh, yeah, just because a lot does go into making these videos. So this is a video I'm working on for this coming week and hopefully you do enjoy it. It is uh, so far, well, obviously I can tell you that we've got the insulation complete in the floor and that's very exciting because the temperatures did drop an additional 10 degrees at night. Uh, so now we're in the low 20s at night, high teens, and that floor insulation is making all of the difference. A question I do want to throw out there is if anybody knows a good way to chop firewood down to about six inches in length. Now we know wood splitter can split the wood down the center, but the wood splitter is good for standard size fireplaces. Now our cubic mini wood stove is much smaller, so we have to cut things down to size quite a bit. And I'm doing a lot of that manually with the juniper wood. Fortunately, the juniper is a softer wood and I'm able to do that. But with the harder wood such as oak and sometimes even the pine, we're having to use the miter saw. And it is, um, it's, you know, putting a lot of stress on the blade. So if any of you have a idea or know of something that chops wood down to smaller sizes, please let us know by putting the information um, down in the comments or any suggestions that you might have. Why don't you put up your chair? Because I'm doing the small pieces first. We decided some kind of outdoor relaxation space was much needed despite the cold, so we carved out the late afternoon to build a fire pit. As it turns out, this is pretty much the exact same spot we had it before when we used to visit and camp here. This is the view we came here for, and this is the view we decided to build here for.
so what we have going on here is the initial framing that will be separating the main part of the house from the restroom. So what we've got here is we've got a 24 on center and 16 on center. This one's 16 on center, we're gonna do another 24 on center. This would standardly be 24 on center all the way across, but we are going to be also putting cedar planks here and they're going to be staggered. So we need these two right here to be able to accommodate where we're going to anchor those down to. And we're getting close. This week, we continue working on framing up the restroom area and getting this part of the house situated. Check back next Sunday for updates to see how far we get with this part of the project. Thanks for watching. See you soon.